Thank you for participating in the public hearing process regarding proposed changes to Metro's FY 2021 budget that, if approved, would take effect January 1st, 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost Metro hundreds of millions of dollars, and ridership is extremely low. The service running today has only been possible thanks to Federal CARES Act funding, which will run out before the end of this fiscal year. If no further federal funding is provided, Metro's Board of Directors are preparing to cut more than $200 million from the annual operating budget through a combination of service cuts, reduced hours, layoffs, furloughs, and other cost-cutting measures. When the FY 2021 budget was originally developed earlier this year, the pandemic had only just begun. Metro had to make assumptions about when riders would return to the system and additional costs amid extreme uncertainty. Unfortunately, the coronavirus in our region has persisted and low ridership has lasted longer than hoped. For example, while schools and many businesses in our region first expected to return to in-person instruction and office spaces at the end of the summer, these plans have been delayed. Six months after the pandemic began, ridership remains extremely low, down approximately 80% from pre-pandemic levels. To put it in perspective, without riders and the fares they pay, Metro is losing almost $2 million every weekday. Meanwhile, Metro has implemented a range of pandemic safety measures to protect the health of employees and customers, which has increased expenses. Metro safety measures include disinfecting stations, rail cars, and buses on a daily basis, along with on-demand disinfection whenever there is a presumptive COVID-19 case. Maintenance crews are mopping, wiping down surfaces, and using electrostatic augers for disinfection every day with particular focus on high-touch areas and operator compartments. In addition to these enhanced cleaning measures, masks or cloth face coverings are required on Metro at all times, including all buses, trains, stations, and other facilities. To illustrate the current reality Metro faces, this chart shows daily weekday ridership between the months of March and August of this year. Back in March, the combined bus and rail system was moving about 1.1 million trips a day, followed by a steep decline when COVID-19 stay-at-home measures were enacted across the Washington region. Since then, ridership has slowly started to return, but remains far below normal levels. The original FY 2021 budget included several ridership scenarios that have been re-estimated to reflect the current recovery plans of area governments and employers. For example, the original budget anticipated contamination rates would be lower by fall as control measures took effect. Schools will reopen for in-person instruction near the start of the new school year, and most office workers will be back to the office by spring 2021. These dates have slipped beyond original projections. Recent surveys conducted by Metro and the Greater Washington Partnership found that employers are adopting a phased approach to reopening with many still uncertain about their plans. For employers that do have long-term reopening plans, on average, they expect to have only 72% of their employees return to the office by summer 2021, and a third of respondent employers are still unsure of their summer 2021 plans. Metro is in an unprecedented situation, making ridership projections difficult. The original FY 2021 budget projected about half of pre-COVID ridership for the full FY 2021 budget year. The likely scenario now predicts only 20% of pre-COVID-19 ridership or 61 million trips for the year. A severe drop in ridership also leads to a severe revenue impact. In a typical year, Metro collects more than 670 million in fares. Because of COVID-19, the FY21 budget adopted in May predicted approximately $281 million in fair revenue. Now, the more likely scenario is that Metro will collect about $117 million in fares this fiscal year. That's only 17% of pre-COVID-19 levels, a significant drop. In order to address the resulting budget gap, Metro will soon resume fare collection on Metro bus and plans to implement aggressive internal cost-cutting measures like limiting the use of contractors, furloughing administrative employees, and deferring capital program expenses. 
However, the budget shortfall is so large that closing the gap also requires service cuts and corresponding layoffs. The chart on the right breaks down each source of proposed savings. $139.4 million in savings from service cuts or service adjustments, $30 million saved by deferring capital projects, and $42.6 million saved by management actions such as furloughing employees and limiting the use of contractors. Unless additional funding is made available, significant bus and rail service changes will be necessary to address the funding shortfalls caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Metro's approach has been to align service with current ridership demand, protect service for essential trips and essential workers, and keep service running for transit-dependent customers. Proposed service adjustments include standardizing weekday rail service frequencies to 12 minutes, implementing rail service turnbacks, shortening service hours, and acknowledging that passenger service on Silver Line Phase 2 will not begin before July 1, 2021, which would result in a net savings of around $92 million. Maintaining the Metro bus service adjustments implemented in August 2020 and resuming fare collection in January 2021 would provide another $68 million in net savings. Metro's proposed rail service adjustments are designed to right-size service with expected demand through June 2021. Matching service with demand requires adjusting Metro rail service hours and train frequencies. These changes are designed to ensure Metro remains available for those who need it and provides enough service for passengers to maintain social distancing. To help lower expenses, trains on all lines would operate every 12 minutes all day, with no differences in peak and off-peak service levels. Where lines overlap in the core, trains would arrive more frequently. On the red line, additional trains will operate between Grosvenor Strathmore and Silver Spring only, typically referred to as turnbacks, resulting in trains operating every six minutes in the core. Saturday service would also be adjusted to operate at the same service levels as Sunday, with service every 12 minutes on the red line and every 15 minutes on all other lines. Furthermore, all yellow line trains would operate between Huntington and Mount Vernon Square instead of Greenbelt. And lastly, the Metro Rail system would close two hours earlier at 9 p.m. on Sunday through Thursday nights. The system would continue to close at 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. As for Metrobus, overall bus service would continue at the current levels introduced on August 23rd, rather than adding service in early 2021 as planned. This service plan provides approximately 75% of pre-COVID-19 levels of Metro bus service throughout the region. The pandemic has changed ridership patterns, and today bus supports more trips daily than rail. In order to make any necessary changes before CARES Act funding runs out later this year, Metro must follow an aggressive timeline. While the typical Metro budget process takes several months of decision, consideration of multiple solutions, and public comment, this change in the middle of a fiscal year requires quick action because the savings must be achieved in a very short time. Metro wants to hear from customers, employees, business leaders, transit advocates, and members of the public who are concerned about these changes. Please make your voice heard as part of the official public comment period, which runs until 9 a.m. on Monday, October 19th. Feedback can be provided by taking a survey and providing written comments, or providing input during the virtual public hearing, as long as it is submitted by 12 p.m. on October 13th. For more information about these proposals or directions on how to provide feedback, visit wmata.com forward slash budget.